having a goal alone isn't enough. So many people are great at coming up with goals. I'm going to accomplish this. I want to make this change in the world. My next goal is to have a million dollars. Great. Like how many times have you set a goal and then never accomplished it, right? <laughs> It's like every new year. What's the difference? Like what makes a difference? Well, what makes a difference is you turn it into a calendar item. So just setting the goal alone is not enough. Your goals will start to happen when you turn the goal into a habit. So there's actually some time you're going to work on it. So if your first goal is I'm going to make $10,000 or $100,000 or my first X number of subscribers. Great. What are you actually going to be doing when in your calendar? Don't just tell me you, this is a hope. A hope doesn't happen. A goal is because you have started to attach work to it. So when in your calendar are you going to be working on making this thing happen? Doesn't mean it's just going to happen overnight. There's still a mountain that you have to climb. There's still work that has to get done. But until you put it in your calendar, nothing happens. It doesn't get done. And so my favorite thing, as soon as I get a goal, as soon as you leave a goal, you get an idea in your head, don't move on to the next thing until you've put something in your calendar. Commit, commit ideally even to somebody else that you're going to show up and do something. But commit to yourself by putting it in your calendar so it's not just a hope, a wish, a dream, but we're actually going to start taking action on it. Need motivation? Watch the top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I watch these videos every day because I need them for motivation. Being around successful entrepreneurs every morning helps me believe that I can do great things too. It's like your morning coffee, but for your goals, kickstarting your day with a blast of positivity. So here is a challenge for you. Try watching one video every morning for the next 30 days, and let's find out together if they help you do great things too. If you're in, leave a hashtag believe in the comments below so I can celebrate with you. Rule number two, serve. I think humans are built to serve. So it's like people are built to serve. Everybody wants to serve. We all want to feel like we're going to make a contribution to somebody else's life today. They, they did functional MRIs on people's brains and they found that serving or helping others triggers the same part of your brain as having food and having sex. It's like it's literally hardwired into you that you want to help other people. So I, the exercise I went through in the room about figuring out your most important core value. I've done that with, I don't know, tens of thousands of people at this point, maybe more. And every time their most important core value is something positive. It's belief or freedom or hope or family or friendship or caring or kindness or empathy. Or, this, it's always positive. Nobody's most important core value has ever come back as death or hatred. So at the core, we're really good. So if everybody's good at the core, why is there so much negativity? Why is there so much fear? Why is there so much panic? Why is there so many takers instead of givers? I don't believe in the label of, of a taker or a hater. It's just a good person who's in a lot of pain. Rule number three, focus on who you are serving. I always just focus on who I am serving instead of who I'm not. And when I got 50 views on a video, it's like 50 people saw this video. I, got, I was so jazzed that 50 people saw a video. It's like if you were to go and give a, a, a speech at the beginning of your career at a library and 50 people showed up, you'd be freaking out. Like 50 people are here to come and see me talk. It's crazy. And yet when we just see a number on a screen, we feel like, oh, that's nothing. Only 50 people saw it. I must, I must suck. I'm not as good as Dr. Axe or Evan or whoever, right? And so we, we tend to, to quit it on ourselves. Uh, so the, the who I'm not game never ends, right? I mean, I've got three point whatever million subscribers. Why is it not, why is it not five? Why is it not 10? Why is it not 50? You know, like that. And that's a growth opportunity. But if we're only looking at, you know, what we're not instead of all the things that we have done, then I think that's what leads a lot of people to quit. So uh, I just always focus on who I was serving. Rule number four, try new things. I think if you have the feeling you want to teach yourself that you come up with great ideas and, it, and they're worth at least giving a shot to, instead of just saying, you know, there's sushi on the table, I don't like sushi, without even giving a shot. Because it sounds gross. Like if you had to explain what sushi is, raw fish with, with fish eggs mm -hmm. and seaweed mm -hmm. with rice and super spicy mustard, that doesn't sound appetizing, right? Like why would anybody eat that? But then you eat it, no, I, I like sushi, I don't you guys, but, but you don't know until you try it. So like you're judging things before you're trying it. And especially when it's yourself, you're judging your ideas before you even try it. You're building uh, the belief that your ideas suck and that you suck and then you stay stuck. And so I, I at least you know, encourage myself to try to flip that, that I have ideas that saying yes to you, okay, let's go. I'm not gonna judge it, let's go do it. 
Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight our favorite lessons from the video that will inspire you to remember what you learned today and actually apply them. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free, there's a link in the description below. Go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business. I'll see you there. Rule number five, stay curious. Here's a quote from Gary Vee that I like. To maximize the value of curiosity, you need a strong work ethic, which we talked about. You need a strong desire to continue learning no matter how much you've accomplished. And so the more successful people I talk to, the more I see how curious they are. They're always trying to learn. They're always asking questions. They're always curious about how things are working. And they don't stay stuck doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. If you look at the people in your life who complain the most, who are the least happy, they're probably stuck in a routine that they hate. They're doing the same thing on repeat, and that's the rest of their life. That is not what you want. You want variety. You want to learn. You want to improve. You want to grow. You want to be curious and stay curious. Rule number six, believe. What are your top 10 tips? What are Evan Carmichael's top 10 tips for success? I don't know. I don't know if I have 10. <laughs> that might take me a while. Uh, let, me, let me start with three and then we'll see where we go from there. Sure. Um, I think the starting point is belief. Like whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. And, in, and people often ask me, what's the common trait between all the people that you profile too? It's like, well, they believe in themselves. Like you sh the, the people who we profile shouldn't, shouldn't be successful from where they came from and what they grew up with, like all the odds stacked against them and yet they go off and do it. Why? Because they believe that where they start doesn't have to be where they finish. And so that belief is, is consistent. And same thing for me, it's also my biggest weakness is like believing myself to go do the next thing. But belief, if you do not believe that you can do something better than what you're doing right now, then all the strategies and how to's and all, will not help you. So, so belief is paramount. Um, and it doesn't even have to be belief to do the big thing, just belief to do the next step. Rule number seven, align money and purpose. Find the fastest path to making money inside of your purpose. So that's what a lot of what the coaching I was doing here today was, all of their ideas are great to just have the sequence wrong. You're trying to do everything all together. And that's where you end up kind of sucking at everything oh, and getting everything. no results, right? Where you're, there are ideas that can bring immediate money and there's ideas that can be, be long-term great place for you. Focus on the ones that bring you immediate money inside of your purpose. Not that you have to go get a job to then go fund this thing. Inside of your big vision for how you want to change the world, what's the fastest way to start making money doing it? Money is not a bad thing. Money is great. Money is a tool. It's a, 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 a necessary it's a fuel. tool. Like you need it. Like fuel. Good luck getting your car to move without fuel. Fuel, like yeah. You need it. It, it's an absolute must. It's not number one, but you have to have it. And so what's the fastest way for you to make money? Because if you can figure that out, that gets you believing in yourself even more. That gets you having some momentum. That gets you quitting your job so you can do this full time. Now imagine what you can do if you were full time versus only part time because you have some job that you hate. Now it gets you to be able to hire team members. This show, we've got four people on your crew here helping out. If it was just you, and you had to figure out the microphones and the no, cameras. Hell no, that, that's not me. That's not right? me. Right? It'd be a disaster. No, but that's what, that's what a lot of people do, right? Yeah, it's I, like, I, oh, I'm going to start a show. So I need to figure out how to do the microphones and the that's lighting. That's the key, guys. That's right? the key. Listen. You don't need to figure that. You need to figure out how to make money inside of your purpose. And then from there, you can do everything else because you can hire a team. You can first quit your job and then you can hire a team. So it's not that start a podcast is a bad idea. It's a great idea. It just might not be an idea for right now. People get the sequence wrong. So it's not, it's not, not ever, it's just not now. And how do we make some money right now so that we can end up building the dream? Rule number eight, establish a daily routine. Establish a daily routine that aligns with your goals. So we set our goals, great. Now we have a calendar, we have a routine. What does that look like? What does our routine every day look like to help us make progress? And so your first goal might be, I wanna get 10,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. Okay, cool, well, what do you need to do? Well, you need to make videos. Great, 
you know how many people I've met who want to grow their YouTube channel and like aren't making videos? They're not consistently making videos. Like you will never have the perfect script. You need to start making videos. You learn by doing. It took me 350 public videos until I wasn't completely embarrassed by myself. Like I couldn't watch my own videos back. Completely embarrassed. And then 700 videos, public videos, until I thought I was starting to get good. It's like, ooh, I inspired myself. I watched it back like, hey, I'm starting to get good at this. So the only thing I had, I, I could have been smarter in how I did it. I could have asked for help. I was too embarrassed, too shy. I never asked for help. And that's why it took me so long to build traction for my channel. Uh, the first year was 25 subscribers, five years in was still a couple thousand subscribers, so it took me a long time to build some traction. But the only thing I had going for me was I, I kept doing it, I kept making it. Even though they weren't good, even though I wasn't proud of them, I, I kept doing it. And so what is the daily routine that you need to put in? Whatever your goal is, it has to be mapped into your actions. So your actions need to map to your actions. What are you going to do every day, even just a little bit, every day to make progress? Uh, if you're going to make videos, like doing it once a month is not going to be enough to get good at any skill. It's like every day you have to find a way to practice a thing so you start getting better because the more reps you put in, the better you're going to get. It's yes, we want to work smart and we want to learn from others. We want to model success and you have to work hard too. So I could, people who've had success are not only working smart, they're working hard and working smart. Rule number nine, learn what to stop doing. Something that I, I really want to bring up with you is your goal to hit 35 million subscribers. I, th I think that, that, that's, that's really cool to see because I don't think anyone in the self-improvement space has done that before. So I, I really want to ask you, like, what's your, what's your mindset like for, for achieving that goal? Like, what changes did you have to make to your mindset? So this idea came from uh, Dr. Benjamin Hardy. Uh, and Dan Sullivan, they co-authored a yep. book called uh, 10X is Easier Than 2X. And they're both friends and uh, I got to spend time with both of them. And after reading the book and hanging out with them, I said, okay, well, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's 10X our goal. And I had 3.5 million subscribers at the time. I said, okay, let's go to 35. And the goal isn't necessarily the goal. The goal is who you become in the process of achieving the goal. And so... What I learned from them that was really helpful is it's as you scale and grow, it's what you need to stop doing more than what you need to start doing. So yeah. if you want to grow by that much, you need to stop doing 80% of the things that you're currently doing. And that means cutting off a lot of things that you're currently doing that are yielding small results. This, it's the classic good is the enemy of great. Like what you're doing is good and it's getting some results. And so it's, you want to keep doing it. But if you keep doing these small things, you'll never do the big thing. And so every major growth that you have is letting go of some of the small things and leaning in on something much bigger. And rule number 10, the last one before some special bonus clip. Value the progress. Talk to me about how you overcame being a perfectionist and what being a perfectionist can do or how it could actually harm your ability to influence others. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a recovering perfectionist. <laughs> still, <laughs> still working my way through it, but I lost a $40 million deal when I was 21, 22 uh, because of I was being a perfectionist and I had a chance to sell my company and it's like, okay, not yet, not yet, not yet. I need the perfect plan, the perfect plan. And then uh, I was I was too late and we lost a huge deal. And from there, I vowed to value the progress over the perfection. And, and that's something that you learn as you get into personal development and watch videos and learn from, you know, legendary entrepreneurs. They'll always talk about the progress over the perfection. But when I was 19, I had no idea. Uh, and so that ended up, really hurting me and losing a giant deal. And sometimes you, you learn the best lessons through painful moments like that. I think when people are trying to get started in, in this career, they're trying to create content, we default to saying, well, I need a professional camera. Look at how good Josh looks and look at how good Evan looks and what's that microphone they're using and look at their camera and it looks so professional and they're so polished and their background is so set up and it, it makes them feel like they can't do it. Where I'll still film videos off my phone for my channel, right? It's not ideal, but if I'm traveling, I'll still just, videos have to go up. And I think if you expect to suck at the beginning, it doesn't mean you suck as a human, but it just means you don't have the skill sets yet. How do you get the skill sets? Well, you practice and you get better. I think the challenge is we know what looks good. 
you know what great looks like. You, you can watch, you know, Dr. Axe's videos here and say, wow, that looks really good. I'm not going to make anything until I can be that good. Well, unless you make, you won't get that good. And so when you start, a lot of times we know what, you know, if you have, if you have Dr. Axe at an A plus, you think, okay, I, I'll, I might not be his level, but I could be like a B. If he's an A plus, I could be a B. And then you go and you make your first video and you realize, oh my God, I'm an F. Like I just totally suck at this thing. I'm not even, I'm even close to a B. And so we have these difference of expectations where if you just expect to suck at the beginning, if you just think, Hey, I am, I'm going to suck. It's not going to work out at all. Uh, but it doesn't mean I suck as a human. I just don't have the skill set yet. How do you get the skill set? Well, by practicing. So when people are on their journey of content creation, I say, don't even judge yourself in the first hundred videos. The first hundred videos, just make it and then make another one and then make another one and you'll, you'll get better. Uh, if you don't get better over a hundred videos, then you suck. But I've never seen it not happen. Like you're going to get yeah. better in that process. And I think, um, you know, the pursuit of perfection or the fear of not being perfect kills more dreams um, than almost anything else. Okay, we just finished. We recorded all these videos. Ray is <laughs> in a sweatshirt in, I don't know how hot it is. It is insanely hot yeah. right now here in Manila. It is. What Do you have a final message that you want to share with uh, Believe Nation before we wrap up? Yeah, sure. So the things that you want to try, try it. It's better, uh, it's better to fail than not trying at all. You got to try it. Let's go, Ray! Yes, Believe! Be the change you want to see in the world. One of my favorite quotes, Mahatma Gandhi. If you're not happy with something, you're not happy with a situation, you, f you fix it. That's why entrepreneurs are going to solve all the problems. Now, as much as there's government and big business, I think it's entrepreneurs, it's us. We're going to solve all the world's problems because we see a problem and we want to fix it. We want to solve it. That's what we do. That's the most exciting part of being an entrepreneur is that you're not waking up and driving to some job that you hate where the work you're doing does not matter, has no meaning, and instead you get to do something that is actually going to touch somebody's life and that is meaningful to you, right? You get to pick, you get to decide, you get to choose. And we're trying to make the world a better place. We're going to make money doing it too, but mission first, purpose first, and then making money along the way in service of others. And it's in that combination of what you love doing with what brings value to other people that you have a successful business. Part of that then becomes being a leader as well. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with being a leader because at the beginning, we are just managing ourselves and that's hard enough, right? It's like, have you had a hard time managing yourself? Have you had a hard time sticking to your routines and keeping to your motivation and staying strong in the things that you say you're gonna do? Like self-management, self-leadership is hard enough. Now we're gonna go off and lead other people as well. And where do we learn about leadership? Where, if we don't go to school for this, we don't have programs, we don't ha probably have great mentors to help us. If you had jobs in the past, or maybe you had a job right now, you probably don't have the greatest leaders around you. Most people suck at it. But it doesn't have to be extremely difficult. And it took me a long time to get used to it and get better at it, and I'm still learning and improving. But we've got almost 40 people on the team now, and when people ask me what's my, defini my definition of leadership, it's I want people to win more than I want them to win with me. And so the key becomes wanting the humans that are on your team to win as humans more than you want them to win with you. That you can have this little disconnection. Obviously they have to do the work if they're gonna work with you. But sometimes the best thing for them to do is to move on. Not because they're not doing their job, but because it's the best thing for them. And so when I connect with the people on my team, it's always trying to figure out where do they want to go? What do they want to learn? What do, they, what do they want to improve on? And I see everybody as running parallel paths with me. So the people around you, the people, even us right now, what we're doing right now, this is a parallel path. You've decided to watch this video. I decided to record this video and we're sharing this moment in time. And maybe you never watch another Evan Carmichael video again. Maybe you end up watching all my videos and we end up being partners on some future business. Who knows? You know, we've been seeing you every day in the future. But as of right now, we're on this parallel path together. And when somebody's with you, walking down that parallel path, the goal of a great leader, I think, should be to try to make that person leave better than how they came in, right? Have, have you ever heard the expression, um, or maybe it's just something my grandfather used to tell me about, you know, when you go to a hotel, 
or you go to a, a new city or you go to a new event, that always try to leave the place better than when you came. You know, and hopefully that's our goal for life. You know, in this life, we try to leave the world a little better than how it was when we came in. And so if you take that approach to leadership, that when you're with the people on your team, and maybe it's for a week on some really short internship, maybe it's for a year, maybe it's for five years, 10 years, maybe it's for their entire life with you, that they have left a little bit better than when they came in because they got to hang around you. And not taking it as an ego play, like I'm gonna make this person's life better because I am so amazing. It's more out of care, genuine care for the people on your team. And I think when we're first hiring, we suck at it. Most entrepreneurs suck at hiring. Most entrepreneurs, their first employee is not with them, you know, a year, two years, three years later, because they hired the wrong person. They have no idea how to manage that person. It's not that that person sucks. It's more that, you know, you don't have the skill set. We don't have the skill sets at the beginning to know how to even find the right person, let alone manage them. And so, you know, we, that's a skill that we have to develop. But I think it just starts with genuinely caring about the people on your team. That yes, they have to get the work done, right? There's a job that has to get done. But how we often think about it is more from a selfish perspective as I need to get this stuff off my plate, right? You're overloaded with work, right? Who's over, are you overloaded with work? We're overloaded with work. So I gotta hire somebody to take this off my plate so I don't have to deal with that ever again. And it frees up my time to go and do other stuff. Right? Sound familiar? Listen, at the beginning, when you bring on a team, it takes more time. It takes more time than it frees up because you have to train them, you have to listen to them, you have to care for them, you have to answer their questions. If you treat them like a robot or a monkey, they're not gonna stick with you. You're gonna constantly be hiring and firing and hiring and firing. You're gonna be massively frustrated and overwhelmed. And a lot of, a lot of entrepreneurs get stuck in that cycle where, has this happened to you? You hire somebody, you know, it looks great on paper. You're so excited for it to go and then it doesn't work out a couple months later and then you decide that, you know what, I'm just gonna do it all myself, right? Uh, I know I can get it done, I'm just gonna do it all myself. Does that happen to you? That is not the path to building a, a movement. You know, you can have a great little solo business for yourself, but that's not how you change the world. That's not how you realize your potential. That's not how you have the impact that you know you're capable of having. You know, you have to have people around you. If you've got a big mission, if you don't have a big mission, it's just, it's just you, cool, go for it. But if you've got a big mission, then it needs to be team. And that becomes a skill set that you have to pick up and learn. And so leadership for me is, again, caring about people as humans more than caring about them winning with you. It's about discovering what they want to learn and grow and improve at, and you being a vehicle to help them do that. And it's surprising how often you can find things that support them and support you. Not all the time. I remember having one guy on my team who his dream was to be a baker. Like, well, I, I don't have an interest in opening up a bake shop, right? But ultimately, you should, you should leave us and go do your passion, because I can't help you inside of this job until I open a bake shop that can really support you in what you want to do. And so even though he wanted to stay, he was staying more out of fear and insecurity than actually doing something he was deeply passionate about. So I gave him till the end of the year, if it was, you know, summer, so give him to the end of the year to, okay, you're, as of the end of the year, you, you're out and you have to go find a job. I love you, but you have to go find something that is in line with your dream because you staying here is is safe and is actually squashing your dreams you have to go do your thing and so you know he had to go and move on and was appreciative for it and giving him time not like okay you're fired next week and then you have other people though and usually you can find something inside of what they care about so the the amount of people who i've met on my team who then they want to learn graphic design or they want to learn Photoshop or they want to learn uh, copywriting or they want to learn how to come up with good titles or they want to learn better communication skills or they want to learn they, they have their lists of like the things that they want to learn it's like cool as long as there's something that we've got that can help you with that some kind of program some project something that can also bring value to the company then let's do it 
Because when people are working on the things that they feel like they're growing in and they're learning in, they're gonna, it, it's just a good thing to do because it's, it's from the heart, you know? And when they feel connected to your heart, everybody's happier and more productive. But it's also just good business strategy. If you wanna just put your XO business strategy hat on, it's, it's great. This is how karma becomes practical. If somebody's engaged and they feel like they're learning and they're growing and they're improving, you're gonna get the best of them versus if they feel bored and stuck and learning nothing new, right? That's what most people do in their jobs. And honestly, the bar for leadership is so low. It's so low. Most people wake up and drive to that job that they hate. So all you have to do, to be honest, to be their best boss is probably just to not be a bad boss. You don't have to be a great boss. You just have to not, not be a bad boss. You just have to treat somebody like a normal human being and actually have a little bit of care and compassion and curiosity to see them win in life. You do that, you're already probably their best boss of all time. I think that's a pretty low standard, but it's a great starting point <laughs> to then be able to say, hey, no, I want, I want this person to have come out of my organization, whether that's in a month or a year or 10 years from now, a better human because they were with us. And it's totally possible. It's just a mindset shift that these people are on your team because they have something to prove as well and they wanna learn. And it's not just about you saving your time and dumping stuff off of your plate and giving it to somebody else so it can be all delegated away. It's that you are a leader and you care about people and you wanna see them win. And you're responsible for making sure that they get pushed outside their comfort zone. You got a big mission inside you. It's a huge mission. And you can't do this alone. And you may not have the skills yet to be the leader that you want to be. Maybe not yet, but you've got a big heart. And honestly, that's the biggest skill that you ever need. Living your life based off how other people think of you is the fastest way to hating your life. Think about it. Everybody's got an opinion on what you should do with your life, right? People, from the moment you wake up, before you've even gotten up, there's a whole bunch of people out there who have an idea for what you should do with your day. Whether it's your friends or your family or your coworkers or your boss or your team or your employees or your customers, everybody's got an agenda for your time. And the first thing that most people do is you wake up, you pick up your phone and you start reacting to other people's emergencies. You are thinking about putting out some content or expressing yourself in some way or getting a new haircut or getting some fresh clothes. And the first thought that then comes to mind is, oh, how am I gonna be seen? What are people gonna think? It's funny, we wanna put out content. The number of people who message me and say, hey, I, I wanna put out content. I wanna create my own YouTube channel, but I'm, I'm too afraid. Like, well, what are you afraid of? Well, I'm afraid that nobody's gonna see it and I'm afraid that people will see it and they will judge me. Think about how crazy that is. You're afraid that nobody's gonna see it and then you're at the same time afraid that people will see it and that they will judge you for it. And so people keep getting stuck in this loop of just constantly overthinking instead of actually doing. And it's a giant dilemma, it's a big problem because you know you're capable of more, right? If you know that you could be here, if you have dreams, goals, aspirations, desires to be up here, right? Like, does that, Do you have goals for where you wanna take your life? Of course you do, for where you could be. And the path to get there is filled with other people's opinions. The, the blocks of why you can't take the next step is because of how somebody might judge you because you're not actually that afraid of failing. You're afraid of failing and who will see you fail, right? You'll sing in the shower, but you won't sing on the street corner. What's the difference? Other people will see you. So you're not that afraid of failure. You're afraid of failing and who's going to watch you. Who's going to see you? Who did you fail in front of looking around like, oh, did they, did anybody see me? That's the problem. And so if you know you're capable of more and you're stuck down here and that's the only difference, you have to, have to, have to, have to, have to learn to start to break that pattern. The second that you start to feel somebody else's judgment of you and that's the reason why you're not taking your idea to the next level, it's not a good enough reason. Nope, not anymore, not for you. Let me share with you a couple tips of how you can take that concept and make it practical. Number one, trust your ideas. Trust your ideas, trust that they came to you, the intention is good, 
right? Ask yourself, this idea that came to me, is, is, the, is the intention good? Are you in a positive place or negative place, right? If, you're, if the intention is negative, oh, I hate that person and I'm gonna screw them over and I'm upset at them and I'm in, I'm in jealousy or rage, okay, don't, don't trust that idea. But the ideas that are positive, the ideas where you're feeling good and bold and powerful and confident, like oh, I've got this great idea. You get these ideas in a shower, you get these ideas when you're on vacation, you get these ideas when you're outside walking in nature. Those ideas, trust those ideas. Trust that they came to you for a reason. Stop overthinking them, stop overjudging them. Stop trying to figure out how it's gonna work out before you take some kind of action. Trust the ideas, period. It came to you, you are a genius, therefore it's a great idea, and start taking some kind of action on it. Step number two, when you feel the burn of somebody's opinion, on you, even even if you even if they haven't done it yet, you just feel the potential burn of somebody's opinion on it. Teach yourself to go do that thing. Do that thing just because, even if it has nothing to do with your business or your goals. Just because. I remember I was walking down a street, and I was on my way to my dance studio. So I own Toronto Dance Salsa. It's the largest salsa dance school in Canada, and. And that was a 25 minute walk, something like that, 20, 25 minute walk. And I had my music on in my ears and I'm dancing on these little side streets as I'm walking there. And then I get to the corner of Young and uh, Shepherd, which is a really busy intersection in Toronto. And all of a sudden, what happens? There's lots of people, right? It's a busy intersection. And what I noticed myself doing was I, I stopped dancing. I went from like big dancing on the street, uh, walking down the street, let's go, let's go, to you know, just like a head bob, right? Just a head bob. And I caught it. I said, wait, what am I doing? I'm, I'm not living my life. I'm not having the fun that I should be having. I'm not playing big because what? Because there's some random people around me. And as soon as I caught that, then I started dancing bigger. I said, put the music on louder, started dancing bigger right there in the corner, Young and Shepherd. And you know what? Most people didn't even care. Most people are like, hey, whatever, walk. They don't even look at you. Uh, some people look and maybe they think it's the worst thing ever or maybe it inspires them. Maybe they have a smile and they go off and make somebody else's day a little bit brighter. Maybe they decide that they're going to take some kind of dance class or sign up for something to change their life a little bit, right? We always assume the negative, but there's also people who you're going to be helping and inspiring. When you bring it down to the, the worst person that I can't do this because somebody may judge me and think negatively of, of me, then you never end up focusing on the people who you can serve, who you can help, and go have a big impact on. So even though that had nothing to do with my business, I just caught myself playing small. And, and the scary part was, I had probably done that walk hundreds or thousands of times, and I never caught it. Now I caught it. Right? So I think we play small by default. We're worried about other people's opinions by default. And as soon as you catch it, you want to teach yourself to go do that thing. Because not taking action and the reason being somebody else's opinion, is that's, that's not a good enough reason. It can't be. Not anymore. Not if you want to go off and accomplish your goals. Because on that climb up, there will be people who will attack you. There just will be. And it has nothing to do with you. A lot of people are, are in such a negative spot. And they took their shot on their dreams. And now because it didn't work for them, now nobody around them can have success. So step one is to trust your ideas, right? It came to you, you're a genius. Let's go do something about it. Step two is to not allow the opinions of somebody else be the reason why you don't take any kind of action. And then step three is to remind yourself that hurt people hurt people. I don't think they're really negative people, toxic people. I don't think it's baked into anybody. I think humans by default are good. We are built to serve. We wanna help. So why would somebody who's built to serve do something negative, tell you that you suck, leave a nasty comment on your video? Because they're in pain, because they're struggling, because they hate their life. Think about you, when, when you were in a lot of pain, when you struggled in your life, did you show up as an amazing human for all the people around you? Did you never go and give somebody a, a snarky remark, right? Are you always proud of how you showed up when you've been stressed out, when you haven't slept? when you're dealing with a really frustrating problem, right? Of course not, you, you, you've had those moments too. Now, it doesn't mean that you go to leave somebody a really negative comment on their YouTube video, but you have reacted out of emotion and you have not been proud of yourself 
I have, you have, everybody has. It's part of the human condition. Now imagine if somebody is constantly being beaten down, constantly hating their life, don't even see a path out. How much rage they have inside them. What are they likely to do? Well, continue that behavior just on a bigger scale. Crying out for an attention because they have no friends, because they hate their life. And this is the only way that they get any kind of significance. And what you can do is when you see something like that, flip it to empathy. Instead of feeling anger, instead of feeling rage, instead of feeling your own insecurity, remind yourself that hurt people hurt people. Why would this person come and leave such a, a nasty comment for you? If they don't even know you because they're dealing with their own struggles. Because if the highlight of their day is coming and leaving a negative comment on your video, how much does that say about how much they hate their life? And when you can actually feel that, it removes the sting from the words. Maybe there's something valuable in, in the comment, but a lot of times it's just hidden. The hidden value is there, but it's under a lot of negativity. Maybe there is actually something in your video or in whatever you create that could be improved. Just the way they delivered the feedback was really, really negative, right? So it allows you to actually see the feedback and see the person when you can remove the sting of the words by recognizing that these people hate their life. And you can help them feel better by keeping doing your thing and making more content. Whatever you want to do in life, whatever your big goals, big dreams, big aspirations are, you have a picture. It may not be a super clear picture, but you have a picture of where you want to go. And that's noble and that's valuable and that's serving. And you're going to touch a lot of people's lives along the way there. But only if you act, only if you do something, those great ideas do nothing if they just sit in your head because you're too afraid to take action because somebody might judge you. The minute you can stop living your life based off the expectations and opinions of other people, that's when everything changes and that's when life starts to get really, really good. If you're not happy right now, it's probably because you're not growing. Humans want to grow. We want to learn. We want to improve. We want to get better. We want to feel like we're making meaningful progress somewhere. And when we feel like we're learning and growing and the work that we do matters, we feel great, right? Have you felt great when you learned a new skill, when you, when you helped somebody out, when you felt that the work you were doing was meaningful? It felt amazing. But if you have too many days in a row where you feel like it's too hard, it's too big, you're not growing, you're not learning, there's, there's no hope, that leads down a really dangerous and negative path, not where we want to be. And part of why we become entrepreneurs is because we want to grow, right? Because we don't want to have a crappy, boring job working for somebody else, wasting our talents away. I remember my, my I didn't have that many jobs, but I had a landscaping job, which was super boring, just every day, just rolling out grass. And then I had a data entry job where this really turned me off of the corporate world where I was doing the work of, we had six people, five people on my team, and I was doing more work than all of the others combined. And I didn't take lunch breaks, I just, I just kept working. And my boss wasn't happy that because I was um, overhead lighting, gave me headaches, I used to have to bring in some snacks like food or uh, popcorn or carrots or something so I didn't get crazy headaches and uh, my boss didn't like that I was eating uh, a snack while I was working and I got into trouble and almost got fired even though I was doing more work than my entire team combined and it just really turned me off of the corporate world to realize hey this is this doesn't make any sense I wasn't growing you know I wasn't learning I wasn't improving. And so you can examine your own life. If you feel like you're in a rut, chances are you haven't learned anything recently. And so we can, we can plan for this. You, know, you can change your schedule so that you can focus on learning. You can put it into your daily calendar. And this is where I think it becomes the, the greatest benefit, my greatest tactic or strategy for you, for myself, is schedule in learning, schedule in growing. So for me, it's my own videos. You know, I make these videos, hopefully for you, that you learn and improve and something sparks for you, but I make them for me. I make them for me because I need it. Because I need to be around people who are doing big things. And that I know that every day there's a video for me. You know? <laughs> it's, 
It's going to be positive, it's going to be uplifting, it's going to spread belief, it's going to be motivational or inspiring, it's going to be tactical, and I know that on my channel I'm going to get content that I want. And so I've hired a whole team and built a whole business basically around making content that I want to watch, and thankfully enough of you guys want to watch it as well that it, it, I can build a business and have a team. But if I didn't, or nobody else cared about it, I would still do it for me. You know, it may not be as fancy, it may not have as much intros and all that stuff, but I would still have it for me because I need it. And so we tend to catch these things too late because it's not part of our habits and routines. So if you notice you go to an event or you watch a video and you get all inspired and you're, you got energy and you're working and things are amazing, cool. And then have weeks or months gone by and you realize, uh, what happened to me? What? How, how did I fall off the horse? so quickly what where did my energy go has that happened to you chances are it's because it wasn't scheduled you know part of the entrepreneur roller coaster is because we're we're bouncing from one high to the next without having any scheduled in learning and growth and so my challenge to you would be to try to figure out how can we schedule in learning and growing every day and so it starts with figuring out okay what medium do you like the most you know for me I like videos, I like being able to see stuff. It just makes it so much easier for me. I'm a visual learner. Before YouTube was a thing, I learned from books. That was the best thing available at the time. Now, I still have a habit of reading 10 pages at least a night, but I, I don't get most of my learning from books, I get most of my learning from videos. But for you, maybe it's videos, if you're watching this, maybe it's books, maybe it's podcasts, something. Like, where do you get the best learning? And then the great thing about where we are right now is there's so much content, there's so many people to learn from, there's so many people creating things out there that you can go and learn from them. You know, if I, I look at an Eric Thomas or an Oprah Winfrey, they have a similar message, just a different delivery style. And so whatever you want to learn, chances are somebody's already making content on it. And so just go and find them. And think about who you're following right now. Like do an audit of who you follow right now. Who are you following on YouTube? Who are you following on... Instagram or TikTok or what podcast you listen to or what books are you picking up and how many of those people that you're following or subscribed to actually make you feel ambitious and hopeful and better about yourself and give you strategies and light you up and feel like you're learning and growing, right? This is the whole point of this. We're trying to make growing and learning a consistent habit. So how many people that you're following actually make you want to learn and grow and how many of them are you just mindlessly scrolling through? You know, when you load your Instagram or your YouTube and you're just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and two hours have gone by and not only have you not learned anything, you feel worse about your life because now you haven't been productive. You know, you've just kind of mindlessly entertained yourself, but it wasn't even that entertaining. You're like, what just happened to the past two hours of my life? Has that happened to you? Cool, unfollow those people. It's not that they're bad people, just that content doesn't light you up and then start to be around the people who do. And the easiest way is through content. So if it's my channel, hey, good news, we got content every single day for you. <laughs> You'll never run out of Evan Carmichael content to watch. But it could be somebody else, it's somebody else in marketing or business or entrepreneurship or personal development or whatever category you're in to subscribe to those people and be around them as much as possible and watch their videos every day, schedule it in. For me, I go for a walk every morning call it my Believe Walk. I just like getting some sun on my face and fresh air and getting out of the home. And it just gives me some perspective and a little bit of motion and helps me set up my day. And then I'll, I'll have a video going from my channel. And um, every morning will be somebody else. It'll be Elon Musk or Oprah Winfrey or Mel Robbins or Tony Robbins or Gary Vee or Tom Billy or whatever. And that's what we do is pull the best clips that I would learn from and then we share it with everybody else. But that's a part of my daily routine and I've, I've seen my own growth and development and learning and bravery and courage and momentum and consistency be directly contributed and correlated to the content that I'm consuming daily. And so step one is to unfollow and unsubscribe from the people who just make you waste time, feel worse about yourself, get envy or just mindlessly tune out. And step two then is to figure out, I need to make learning, you need to make learning, growing, a part of your daily habit. 
And so where in your calendar can that fit? If it's over breakfast, if it's a morning walk, if it's a afternoon lunch, like where in your calendar can you put learning from your preferred style, video, podcast, books, etc. learning into your daily calendar. If you did that, your life will change. If you did that every day for the next year, every day, if you did that, if you scheduled that in and you actually did it, and you, you watched a video, read a book, or listen to a podcast that inspired you, said, you know what, I can do this, I can do more, I can be more, I can accomplish this, I gotta stop thinking small and stop doubting myself and stop telling myself that I suck and I can't do it. I can do this, like if you felt that energy, every day from watching a piece of content that you intentionally put into your habits and routine, every day for the next year, your life will totally transform. You will be a, a totally different person, which then allows you to serve more, to help more, to make more money, to guide more, to be a leader more. All of it, all of your ambitions and dreams and everything that you want is all possible. But you have to factor learning and growing into your daily consistent habits and routine. Burnout is real. But I think most burnout happens because people are not doing the thing that they actually love doing. It's not just about being busy and keeping your mind occupied all day. You can be busy and hate your life and get burnt out. If I was an accountant, I would hate my life and burn out in a day because I don't like being an accountant. But doing this thing that I love, I put in way more effort, way more work, and I love it. It's been 10 plus years of still having my YouTube channel and I'm not burnt out. If anything, I'm pushing harder than ever before because I love it. And so I think it's not just about being busy, it's about being busy on the thing that is your mission for life. Now, compassion fatigue is a thing. Doing it so much that you burn out yourself is possible. But again, that is not why most people are burning out. Most people, I believe, are burning out because they're spending too much time, too much energy, too much effort doing things that they hate. And if you wake up and hate your life and hate the job you're about to go to, then there's no wonder why you feel like you're burning out. So I recently came back from going to Tony Robbins' event in Dallas. He invited me to sit in the front row and uh, super blessed and grateful to have Tony's support. And I went there with Alex, friend of the channel, who helps me run Toronto Dance Salsa. And we were on a super crunch timeline because Alex was teaching classes the, the evening before we left and then the day of the last event. And we, we rushed down there. Alex was flying in just to get to the event. He's late on the first day. We're rushing to leave on the last day. And it's nonstop. If, you, if you've been to a Tony Robbins event, it's, it's, it's all day, all night. It's eight in the morning to midnight and then up again the next day and doing the same thing. And, and it's wild and it's fun, it's amazing. And my favorite thing to do whenever I travel is actually meet Believe Nation, meet you guys. And so all through the event, I wear my Believe hoodie and I'm not wearing Grant stuff, I'm wearing Evan Carmichael stuff with the plane and the Believe on the back and people are stopping me. And that's actually the best. It doesn't take away from my experience. Tony's often on stage at the top at the beginning of every event saying, hey, I have some friends of mine, you might know them, they might be celebrities, leave them alone, don't talk to them, let them have their own experience. And it always makes me sad when he says that because for me, meeting you guys, meeting people who recognize me, and that's a group that I over index because people who watch Tony videos, you know, they're probably gonna find my content. I like it, I like it more when people come and say hi. It adds to the experience for me. And then on the last day before we rushed out to go to the airport, I set up a meetup. Right? I had an hour open before having to get to the airport, so let's do a meetup. Let's do a local Dallas Richardson, Texas meetup, right? And and it could have spent the time doing something else or sleeping in or writing my book or doing anything else. But it's not burnout for me. Like that fuels me. That gives me more energy. I love it. Hanging out with Believe Nation gives me more energy than it takes away. And I then took an Uber to get to my to the airport. And the guy who drove in the Uber was actually in the, the meetup in Richardson's like I gotta leave early because I gotta start my job okay great and then I book an uber and there he is <laughs> a total fluke but amazing and so it's a lot of work you know I was all day all night not connecting with my team not doing the things that I'm supposed to be doing and then I still make time to be with people and and make a one hour meetup because that hour was open and it fuels me but if it was something that I hated just that half an hour just 15 minutes, I'd start to feel like I'm burning out. Like, I don't wanna be here, but this is terrible. And so I think it's really important that you're doing work that you love, that would be a burnout for other people, but not a burnout for you because you love it so much. 
So how do you find it? How do you find the work that you love? I got a three step process called Who, Why, How. I'm gonna talk about it in depth in my next book, but let's do a super quick analysis here to help you guys who might be struggling. Step number one is who. So your who is your most important core value. What is your most important core value as a human being? Mine is belief. It's the one word most important core value for me. So when you figure out what it is that you stand for as a human, you can then look at your life and see where you're falling short. If you are unhappy with life, it's because you are living incongruently with your most important core value. So someone whose core value is freedom, as an example, you can look at your life. Like, are you allowed to be free? Are you free at work? Are you free in your relationships? Are you free, you know, in these different areas? If not, then you're not gonna be happy. That's why you're not happy because your boss doesn't allow you to have freedom. Mine is belief. So belief has to be in everything that I touch. If there's a situation that's lacking belief, I'm not gonna be happy with it. So that just gives you already an indication of who you are and starts to make sense of your life going backwards and allows you to plan it better going forward. So it's one of the most important exercises I think anybody can do, figure out what your who is. Who I have, step two is why. So why is your purpose? Your purpose comes from your pain. Your purpose comes from the deepest, darkest, most painful moment in your life Whatever that was, your purpose is to help other people who are currently going through that thing. Whatever you struggled with, suffered with, endured, felt like you never wanna wish that on your worst enemy, never wanna go back and experience again that pain. That's what I'm talking about. You wanna help other people who are currently going through that pain because there's a lot of people who are currently going through that thing. Who you were X number of years ago, there's a lot of people who are currently like that right now. That's who you wanna help for life. That'll never get old. That's your purpose for life. I wanna help entrepreneurs for life. I believe in entrepreneurs for life because I struggled so much as an entrepreneur and I wanna make the path a little bit easier for everybody else. So that's your why. And your who and your why are constant. They never change. Your core values and your purpose are for life. And that's amazing. The last step is how. Who, why, how. How is your passion? How is how you got out of the pain that you're in. So you struggled with something. How did you get out of it? You may not be fully out of it. Maybe you're still on your journey out of it, but you're further ahead than you used to be. How did you get out of it? Did you read books? Did you watch videos? Did you meditate? Did you walk your dogs? Did you listen to music? Like, how did you get out of it? How did you get out of it? And that is a recipe that you can teach other people. How you got out of it was not some random one-off situation. You can teach other people. So I struggled a lot with my business. I felt worthless as a human. I wanted to quit. I told my partner that I quit. How I got out of it was modeling success. I looked at Bill Gates, how he started Microsoft, and I applied those strategies to my business and we started to see some success. 20 years later, what am I doing? Still modeling success. Right? I wanna learn from Grant, I wanna learn from Steve, I wanna learn from Kanye, I wanna learn from these people. That's why I keep creating this content. How I got out of it was studying success and now I teach other people how to study success. Right? How you actually go about doing it may change. When I first started doing it 20 years ago, it was through books. Right now it's through videos and in 10 years, 20 years is gonna be through VR and a bunch of other technologies that I'm sure are coming. But the how you got out is a teachable recipe that you can give to other people. So if you're struggling with burnout and you think it's because you don't love the work that you're doing and you know that you're destined for something greater, that you do have Michael Jordan level talent at something, but you don't know what it is and you wanna figure it out, figure it out. This is, this is the process. This is the easiest process I know of to get there. Figure out your who, your one word most important core value, figure out your why, your purpose comes from your pain, and figure out your how, which is your passion, how you got out of it, you can teach other people, and that will set you up for an amazing life with hopefully very little burnout and definitely a lot of purpose. Your energy changes how you show up. When you are happy, positive, optimistic, full of life, creative energy, you, you make amazing things. But when you feel negative, down, depressed, sad for yourself, low energy, you know you don't make amazing things. And it, this is not something new that I'm telling you, you know this. The challenge is we are not in a high energy state consistently enough to, to stay consistent on our goals, to follow through, to create the momentum. Because we allow outside forces, as well as our internal voice, to keep us small, to keep us protected, to keep us scared, to depress our courage muscle. And then even though you have great ideas and great ambitions and a great heart and a desire to serve, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen because the energy isn't connected to it. If you've got a big idea but low energy, nothing happens. You don't follow through. And you end up seeing other people with a worse version of your idea 
but just more energy and go off and do it. Uh, have you ever seen it happen? Have you ever seen somebody make tons of money, have a huge impact off of your idea? With somebody with less heart and less vision and less creativity, but they just, they just did it. They just got started. They just took action and just stayed consistent in their energy and they made it happen. And you didn't because you allowed the energy to dip. And so if energy is so important, then how do we, how do we manage our energy? How do we keep it high? And it doesn't mean that you always have to be on top of the world and you don't have to delude yourself and say, I'm amazing. This is going to be the greatest day of all time. Like you don't, doing things that you don't believe won't help you get the energy that you need because you'll do those things and say, this is BS, this isn't working. You don't always have to be in peak energy. But what you do need to do is be in the right energy to serve your mission and whatever you're doing today. So let me use me as an example. And today uh, is a great example because I did not sleep well last night. Had had two and a half hours sleep, just tossing and turning and, and just could not, could not get to sleep. <laughs> So I slept from like 6.30 to 9 o'clock, did not sleep until 6.30 in the morning. And that is thankfully a rare occurrence. You know, most nights I get eight hours sleep, seven and a half to eight and a half hours sleep. But on a day like today, when I woke up and did not have a ton of energy, I did not wake up and say, yes, I feel like crushing it, let's go. And I didn't want to do something that would feel fake and disingenuous because if you don't believe it, then it's not gonna happen anyway. So what did I do? Well, first off, videos have to happen today because that's part of my identity, right? So momentum has to happen. So if you start to train yourself and you create a calendar and say, okay, today is a blank. I'm filming this on a Tuesday. Today's a Tuesday. Tuesday's my video day. No matter what, I'm filming videos. I gotta film videos. It's gotta happen. It may not be my best video, but I'm gonna show up and give it my, the best that I've got the best energy, this is, this is a lot lower energy than I would normally show up with a video, but it's a different vibe, it's a different kind of energy and hopefully it still serves. And maybe, maybe you like and connect more with this energy than I've been yelling in the car, I don't know. But videos have to happen, first off. Second, get outside, you know, get outside, get fresh air, get some sun on my face. If you, you know, you wanna change your energy, you wanna shift where you're at and how you're thinking, because it's part physical energy, but also just mental energy. How do you feel about what you're doing and what's gonna happen today? And getting out of your home, changing your physical environment, and getting some sun on your face can make a huge difference. So every morning I have my Believe Walk and I'm walking around the park, getting some green, getting some sun. Hopefully it's not raining. Today's a beautiful day. And already it starts to make you feel a little bit happier, a little bit more in the right energy space. Music is a great way to change your energy. And often what we do is we put on songs that make us feel how we currently are. So if you feel sad, you put on a sad song. If you feel low, you put on a low song. If you feel chill, you put on a chill song. Where what we want to do is, if you want to change your energy, put on the song that matches that energy. If you want to feel happier upbeat, put on happier upbeat songs. I have a playlist on my channel called hashtag believe, all caps on the, on the letters believe. That's all of the songs that I listen to. And every day I've got that playlist going. I pick a random song and it just starts playing. And they're all songs that if they came on, it would make me move. And when you move, you start to change your energy. What I'm trying to do is, again, not create some fake energy, but something that I can actually connect with. I'm putting on songs that I actually like. I actually like having some sunshine on my face. You know, I actually like doing the work that I'm about to do. But it requires you showing up with a certain level of energy. And then the last one is, you know, who you're feeding your mind with, who are you around, who you're surrounded by, both the people in your life, you know, actual humans, and the videos that you watch, or books that you read, and podcasts you consume. I remember um, on the weekend, and you, you gotta guard against this, it's crazy. So on the weekend, I went to go meet an old family friend, and he just had, a lot of limiting beliefs about him and what he's creating and where he wants to go. And uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't meant to be a coaching session and I'm not there to help him, but just a really negative, low energy on a weekend. And I'm, you know, that's not usually part of my routine on the weekend. And so I go to meet him. And my whole day ended up being thrown off until I caught it at night to say, why are, 
why am I so low and negative today in comparison to what I would normally be? And I thought back, like, oh, yeah, you know what? Ever since I went to see him, I was fine in the morning. I went to see him and it had this negative ripple effect. You know, like, you can have a positive ripple effect on people. You watch a video and it can have a positive ripple effect on you. But, but there's negative ripple effects, too. And the people who you're surrounded by, who you're hanging out with, or you're watching on YouTube or podcasts, etc., they can have a negative ripple effect on you as well. And so he had this negative ripple effect on me that lasted almost the whole day until I caught it in the evening. I said, this isn't what I want. It's not even my voice. It's like his voice planted in me. Why am I feeling this way, thinking this way? I don't, I don't like it. And so it became a conscious choice and I applied a lot of the same things. I got it, I went outside. Went outside, reset, get some fresh air. It always helps me. Put on some music, songs that I actually like. Not some fake song that somebody else likes and says, dance to this, it'll make you feel good. Songs that I actually like. There are some songs that if it came on, it would make you move. It doesn't mean you get up and dance and go spastic and crazy, but there's some songs that if it came on, you would, you would bob your head, or you would tap your feet or bounce your knee. There's some songs that would just make you do that, right? So put on one of those songs. It would naturally make you feel happier. Um, so I did that too. And then in terms of just guarding against people, I made a note that, hey, the next time I go see this person, he's a, he's a family friend. So the next time I go see him, uh, which isn't that often, but still, the next time I see him, I need to remind myself of this. You know, that, that I, need to, I need to have my shield ready I need to give love as much as possible and I'm not gonna allow his negativity to, to break my shield, you know, to permeate through. And so the more that you can catch those things, the more you'll stay in a more energetic state. And all of this, again, is not trying to force fake energy and have you feel like you're doing something unnatural. I think it's actually the most natural thing of all time. I think getting sun is natural. I think smiling and being optimistic is natural. I think everything, I think the negativity inside your head was planted there, was put there by other people. That's what's unnatural. When you were a kid and smiling and happy, had dreams for the future, everything was possible. Everything was hopeful. Sure, you had bad days, but you were a happy kid. And all of those dreams and positivity get squashed out of us by other people who hate their lives. And so I think having energy is actually the most natural thing. Not every day has to be on top of the world, but having positive energy is natural. Having sunshine and leading to happiness is natural. Putting on music and, and dancing and moving is natural. Being around other positive, optimistic, happy people, when you're around them, you'll naturally be more positive, optimistic, and happy. And so it's about finding what is a natural flow for you. That when you do these things, it brings out a better energy in you. It brings out a happier, more positive, more optimistic you. And if you know what some of those things are, you can copy my list if you want some of them, right? Sunshine music, videos. Then put it into your daily routine. Put it into your daily calendar. Every day, this has to happen. Because if you did the thing, just imagine this. You've had days when you felt energetic, and you've had days when you didn't, and every would everybody would give you the the out, right? Like a day like today, two and a half hours sleep. Everybody would give me the out. It's like, it's okay, you don't have to do it. There are days when you need to bring the energy. If you did that every day, just imagine for the next month, every day, you did the thing that puts you in a better energy state. Not that you're on top of the world and then a fake high every day, but a better energy state. You did the thing in the morning that puts you in a better energy state for the next 30 days. How much does your life change? How much does how you show up change? How much does the work that you do change? How much does your bank account change? How much does the impact you're creating change? How much of a better father or mother or husband or wife are you because you're showing up with more energy, more positive energy? For another top 10 videos with Evan, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there.
This is what saved my business when I wanted to quit at my company, my first software company. And then I realized that, you know what? I'm not the first guy to try to sell software before. Like somebody has figured this out. If I just learn.